Bro, he just gets progressively more red when he's talking. And I personally love that. Like that's his that's his quirk. <laughs> that's his secret superpower. I'm saying it. Actually, fuck it. Let's dive into it. Ben. A train wreck combined with a dumpster fire. Trump versus Biden reaction. I'm gonna skip the intro and stuff because like who gives a shit? Joe Biden's <laughs> mental and physical ability to be fit to serve the most powerful and important office in the country. As you were watching last night's debate, what was going through your mind? I was right. Um, so, I, <laughs> as you know, I took an extraordinary step of running for president against Joe Biden in the Democratic primary, even though I'm not even a natural born citizen, uh, because that's how desperate I was, our audience was. We did a poll and we asked our paying members, should I run? And not, and now, nine months ago, 76% of them said, for God's sake, run. Do you know why? Because it was... Wait, out of your... I, I missed this part. That's kind of an L. It wasn't 100%. Like, those are your paying members, man. <laughs> what? Why wouldn't they want you to be president? Or at least, like, try to run for president? That means 24% of his paid fans said no. <laughs> it was obvious. And what I took away from it, Piers, and what's, what everyone should remember is how much democratic leadership lied to you and how much everyone in mainstream media lied to you. They said the emperor had clothes when it was obvious that he had no clothes. They said that he was perfectly fine and he was a dynamo behind the scenes. How preposterous. We were right all along. So the next time they tell you, you got to vote for Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton in a primary because they're the only ones who can win, remember this preposterous lie. Remember how terribly they deceived you into picking the weakest candidate, not the strongest candidate. And peers, every time I said, let's pick someone stronger so that we can beat Trump, they said, oh, you want, oh, so you like Trump, you want to help Trump. No, you picked the strongest no. person so you can beat Trump. And apparently they couldn't understand simple concepts like that. But now the whole world has seen what we saw all along. You know, Cenk, before we go to the other three, they, there are reports uh, as we're talking now that Barack Obama has been having urgent conversations with Joe Biden to try and gently persuade him. Is this from today? Yeah, it's from this morning. Wait him. It may be time to give up. Uh, but apparently, Jill Biden is resisting, wants him to fight on. Kamala Harris is enraged that her name is not in the conversation to potentially replace him. Uh, people want to bypass her completely because she's even more unpopular than he is. Uh, a move to somebody like Gavin Newsom or, uh, or someone like that. Um, what is the what is the playbook here? Well, are, are we into unprecedented territory? Because I don't think any incumbent president in American history who is seeking to be re-elected and hasn't stood down uh, has ever been forced out. There's no mechanism to actually force him out unless he voluntarily goes, is there? Yeah, there is one mechanism, unfortunately, and it's the donors. Uh, because once the donors stop funding him, uh, then he'll have no oxygen left. Remember, for someone who's a populist like Bernie Sanders, their source of power is the people. But for people like Biden, who are establishment candidates, their source of power is money. And once the money tap is turned off, then he's got no oxygen left. So I don't care what Jill Biden thinks. Are you like who's insane enough to care what she thinks? I don't care what Kamala Harris thinks. I care about picking the. How can you not love this man, dude? God, I love my uncle, my goat. Strongest candidate against Trump. Is democracy on the line or isn't it? Is, is this the most important? I love when he gets mad. He's like, is democracy on the line or isn't it? <laughs> oh, man. My goat, dude. An election of our lifetime or isn't it? So I literally only did this. I only did this panel because uh, Jank was doing it. I was like, I just want to stand there and, and bob. Go and nod. Just go, yep, yep. He's right. He's right. He's cooking. So now they're talking about, oh, whose personality should we... Bronny and LeBron? Bitch, I'm the LeBron to his Bronny. Come on now. ...care more about? Wh whose feelings are more important? None of your feelings are important. What's important is that the American people be safe from Donald Trump. And let's be honest, Democratic leadership has never cared about that. And peers, let's tell your audience why. Because remember, almost everyone on Biden's team, at the White House, on his campaign, at the Democratic National Committee, they're just...
I was gonna go in for a nail biter because the camera was uh the camera was not on me and then it swapped back and I was like Fuck. <laughs> yeah I see that jobs are tied to Joe Biden if there's a new candidate they all get fired so they have been enormously monstrously selfish saying I don't care if the country burns as long as I get to keep my job they betrayed you greatly and you should never listen to them again okay let me bring in some of the others uh Hassan Piker I mean you'd have to be willfully negligent it, with regard to what you saw with your own eyes, wouldn't you, to watch that debate last night and not conclude as so many. Jim Nona is back and being more annoying than ever, by the way, which is shocking. Jim Nona is back. This is the Hassan guy you were looking for, pal. When mom find the poop sock, I will not be MVPing him. Biden supporters and friends have publicly concluded, this is from, you know, people like uh, Frank Bruni at the New York Times and others who just come out and said, you've got to stand down. D did you see anything last night that would allow you to construct an argument that he should continue and be the nominee? Biden continuing? Absolutely not. But um, there's another glaringly obvious problem here. Jake and I have had this conversation personally uh, for years at this point, very publicly, about Biden being ineligible to run and how he's going to lead to the downfall of the Democratic Party and, and potentially lose a pretty easy-to-win election against Donald Trump at this point. And we were absolutely right. And it was shocking that so many in the media who are now writing those articles that you're talking about were acting as though Biden was actually a dynamo behind the scenes. After, I mean, there was literally an article I remember uh, uh, from an excerpt from a Jill Stein book about how uh, in order to soften the blow of Biden's uh, age and, and how old and senile he's appearing on television, they were saying that he had really hard sex with his wife. I mean, that's to the extent that these guys went to in order to try and manufacture this narrative. And to anyone with eyes and ears... I'm not wrong. I, I mean, they did that. Don't say, huh? That is real. They did that, bro. That, that is a thing that happened. That is a thing that actually happened. You cannot get mad at me for saying something that they objectively did do. I don't care that they don't know what I'm talking about. It's something that literally happened. I wanted to show the extent of the mania from the Democratic Party in terms of like the operatives coming out and being like, this is how great Biden really is. February 25th, 2024. Good sex is secret to Joe Biden's long marriage. New book on first lady says Joe thick eight. I mean, for sure. The Bidens have the Bidens have cock meat. Like that's not in contest here. That's not, that's not contested. That is 100% proven. Okay. I have seen not one, but two Biden cocks at this point, both Hunter Biden and even Joe Biden's brother. And both of them are hanging dong. Okay. It's true. They have nice dick meat It's facts. So, you know, it's not a wild estimation to make that Joe Biden is also hanging dong meat ears to hear they could see what biden uh, looked like what biden's performance looked like so i don't understand why it's so shocking to people david axelrod said on cnn uh i believe at this point eight months ago nine months ago that you know biden has to go someone yeah. else has to come in uh and and you know potentially win this race you have an election coming up right now where the down ballot races where you have democratic party senators doing 10 points better than the top of the ticket, than Joe Biden in places like Nevada, in, in states like Arizona. These are states that Biden has to win. You have uh, issues, especially post-October 7, with the supposed blue wall that's obviously destroyed. You've got Michigan. That's a, uh, that's, that's a potential problem for Joe Biden. All of these swing states that uh, the Democratic Party should be clearing up with, like, Reagan numbers uh, right now are in contest. Having said that, um, Donald Trump also had a phenomenally bad performance last night. It's just that no one is going to talk about that because one guy was very clearly demented. So when the other guy is talking about immigrants and, and how they're responsible for everything that is going on for an hour and 30 minutes straight, people didn't even have the time to make that assessment because they were so unimaginably shocked at the fact that the Democratic Party has basically put forward a cadaver why don't you project your voice more when on tv you seem nervous eh? 
I am. And not nervuse, but I am projecting my voice. It's a different microphone. And tried to push him over the finish line uh, and, and are hoping that you don't notice. Okay. We're gonna be, I'm going to come to your two panelists in a moment. We're going to be joined right now, though, by the Republican U.S. Senate candidate for Arizona, Carrie Lake. Um, yeah, they just cut in and brought Carrie Lake in, which I'm skipping because who gives a shit about Carrie Lake? Then uh, Jenna Ellis comes in and talks about the Republican triumph. Uh, no one, like, we didn't really interrupt one another except for the uh, one blowout moment where Vinny was popping off. There is panic. Do you think it's unfounded? Well, I think it's unhelpful. Uh, and I think it's unnecessary. Uh, we've got to go in and got to keep our heads high. And as I say, we've got to have the back of this president. You don't turn your back because of one performance. Well, what kind of party does that? Oh, by the way, for the record, they muted our microphones because when Carrie Lake was on, I was I was trying to chime in and my microphone was muted. Just letting you know, because <laughs> if you think I wasn't trying to say some shit, <laughs> I was, <laughs> which is kind of up they pulled a yeah they they pulled a debate move on me they pulled a cnn debate move on my ass it's been a master class 15.6 million uh, uh jobs that's eight times more than the last three republican presidents combined the only thing the last three republican presidents have in common is recessions democrats deliver this president is delivered we need to deliver for him now Vinny, I, I, here's the thing uh trump had a great night i mean the, even the cnn poll 67% of CNN viewers felt that Trump put in a better performance than 33% for Biden. God knows who the 33% were, but um, he obviously won the debate very comfortably just by just not doing very much particularly special. Um, but if they do get rid of Biden and they do parachute in somebody like Gavin Newsom, who's young, he's dynamic, he's not afraid to get into the horses, uh, into the lion's den. He went on Fox News with Sean Dude, Hannity. he's for so handsome. That's why he's there, because he's hot. And I'm unafraid to say it. Vinny, for those of you who don't know, which is probably many of you, unfortunately, uh, because you aren't here when we're getting value-tained, it seems, is a uh, pivotal part of the value-tainment podcast led by Patrick Bud David, who also is like Bizarro Jank, another person that I love. Stupid Sexy Vinny is also a person that I love. Um, he is, he's great. He's just, he's just a hot man. That's what it is, okay? Now and acquitted himself. You're hotter just saying, I love, I love chatters taking what I'm saying seriously and going, no, 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 like he's not, he's attractive, but you're more attractive. Like guys, I'm, oh my God, I'm not even gonna, no, he's a hot man. That's all I'm gonna very say. Well, he's eloquent, he's sharp. Yes, he's got a record that can be attacked. But in terms of the visual optics, would that not concern you a bit? Uh, as a as a Trump fan, as a Republican, that you might end up out of this victory with a far more difficult opponent to try and defeat in November. No, you. Oh, I, yeah. I I think don't put anything past the Democrats. The, the fact that Gavin Newsom can sit there co and and literally look at somebody in the face and say Joe Biden's presidency has been a master class. That Gavin Newsom is one of the the most disgusting snakes in the grass. Just look at look at California, okay? I even have to write this down, uh, Pierce. Highest taxes in the nation. Thousands of businesses have left. Mandatory vaccine bills. Losing child custody over... I love that he's he's had to write those things down. Like, if you want to understand how stupid he is, <laughs> like, he's like, what did you write down? Oh, mandatory vaccine bills? Like, that's what you couldn't remember? Like, it's not like you're giving data. You're not putting forward data. You wrote down California bad, and I hate it. They're making the kids gay. <laughs> Over if your child doesn't transition, seven dollar gas. This is, and I'm telling you right now, uh, Pierce, it's scary as hell. And I don't care what anybody says. This has all been a plan. Okay, they moved the debates up early. All right, they didn't give him any whatever he was on on the, on the uh, State of the Union. Piers, that, that 60 minutes, he was up. They probably gave him adrenaline. He was there. He was in the moment. This was the time when they put him out there like a sacrificial lamb. They said, listen, Jill, we're not going to give Joe any drugs. We're going to roll him out there. He looked lost. He had no idea what he's going to do. I think the shift is going to happen 100%. There is absolutely no way they're going to stay with him. And that is going to be a huge challenge for the Republicans. Bro, he just gets progressively more red when he's talking. And I personally love that. Like, that's his that's his quirk. <laughs> that's his secret superpower. He just, like, gets more and more red. Republicans, because all this, because we've had a case study, uh, Pierce. We've had four years of Trump, and now we're going to have four years of Biden. There is no debate. There's no arguing. Dude, look at his neck veins, dude. He's pushing that shit out, dude. Like... <laughs> 
Do you get bored sitting in there for an hour? Yeah, it was boring. The country is is shit right now. And I know Hassan said, you know, Trump was talking about the border and the illegals are the problem. They are the problem, okay? They are. Kerry mentioned one story. There's been four this week, four, of young girls getting raped and murders. And people like that that say, oh, it's not really, it's not really a problem. You say that because it's not happening to you or your family or your daughter or your mother, okay? It is a problem. And by the end of this four I years, the, the I, number's I, probably I gonna be 18 million. Whole state of California. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I live in California. Yeah, it, yeah. We are a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, state I know. as it's the a, governor it's a hell also hole. mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole lot. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, are you brought California? Is a shit show. Look at yeah, your yeah. tan. Oh, yeah, it's sinking. By the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to see how far I could take this. Like, I wanted to see what would happen. It just, I had to, I had to, okay? Like, is it productive? No, okay? But like, when you see an opportunity, when you see an opportunity to see just how red a human being can get, this is like a science experiment at this point, okay? <laughs> like, I wanted to do this because <laughs> scientists are saying, this is the most red a man can get. Watch, because you think he's red right now. Just you wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's a whole lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Are you California is a shit show. Look at yeah, your yeah. tan. Oh, yeah. It's sinking. By the way, first of all, I don't respect <laughs> any Nepo baby that thinks Twitch streaming is a job. And what you, I want the audience to know this guy, Hassan, has said in the past that America. I think he wrote that down, too. <laughs> he's looking at his notes. Uh, Deserve 9-11. So don't even talk. Don't even open your mouth. Don't even open your mouth. You don't have no Vinny, reason to talk. Vinny, Just shut I'm up. A, I'm a big Just fan of you. Just do your favor and shut up. I'm a big fan of you. And, okay, and but yo, but hold on. I'm a hold big on. fan don't of you, so I don't want you bro. to die. I feel like you your heart pressure is going up. You, <laughs> you're turning, you say, you're turning wait, red, Vinny. Somebody like you <laughs> to say America deserved 9-11, Hassan, you shouldn't be on this panel. I'm sorry for my language, Pierce. He doesn't belong on your show. That being said, <laughs> Pierce, it'll be a huge Are challenge. You triggered, Vinny? Huge challenge for Democrats. Should we invoke Donald Trump? I, I, when I said that, if Pierce hadn't interjected, he would have died. Okay. When I said, "Are you triggered, Vinny?" and he heard it, look at his face. You shouldn't be on this panel. I'm sorry for my language, Pierce. He doesn't belong on your show. That being said, <laughs> Pierce, it'll be a huge Are challenge. You triggered, Vinny? Huge challenge for Democrats. Hasan bu tarz şeylerden bahsettiğinde bence çok saçma oluyor. Niye sürekli yapıyorsun bunu? Sana ne lan? Yarram! Sana ne? Seni mi siktin? <gülüyor> I'm starting to think that he doesn't like you. Yeah, it was very sad. Because I like him a lot. But yeah, he had to, Pierce had to join in and, and cut it out. Because otherwise he was going to die. How he got this red? Oh yeah, his head's about to pop off. Can we invoke Donald Trump all, right bro. now and say streamer. let's not be children? Yeah, I think Vinny, that's a very good Vinny, tool, Jenna. Yeah, no, I don't think you're trying to keep trying to keep let's things. Let's not, we get back let's to the, do you know what was interesting? What was interesting? Well, hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on. What was interesting about last night actually? Um, I'll bring Cenk back in here. I thought I like the format actually of Piers love that shit. By the way, <laughs> Piers love that shit. Look, huge challenge for Donald Trump. Yeah, I don't. Let's invoke Donald Trump right now and say let's not be children. Look at his face. Children. Yeah, I think Vinny, that's a very good Vinny, tool, Jenna. Yeah, I don't think you're trying to keep, try and keep things. Not, if we get back to the... the only one not laughing is Jank. He was disappointed, I think. He was mad. What did Jank say? He didn't say anything. That, Do you know what was interesting? What was interesting? Well, hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on. What was interesting about last night, actually? Um, I'll bring Cenk back in here. I thought I liked the format, actually, of the way CNN did this. I thought Jake Tapper and Dana Bash did a very competent job. But also, I liked the format where there was no audience to manipulate, perhaps, or save a candidate for themselves. Um, He's so mad he had to drink his water. <laughs> or to overreact, to try and drown out a particularly salient point. Uh, and, and the mute button worked very well. You could see both candidates <laughs> trying to speak at various times when their mute button was on. I, I don't know what you thought, but I actually thought it was a pretty good format uh, for showing us what the reality was of these two candidates. So, Piers, uh, a lot of people are criticizing CNN now, and in fact, they themselves this morning admitted that maybe we should have fact-checked uh, Trump once or twice uh, when he said, like, 
deranged things like, oh, there's post-birth abortions. That that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, but, why, but my answer would be, I, why, hold, Joe, hold Joe Biden should have done it. Right? Bi Biden oh, should have called him on, out on all those on. things, but he wasn't able hold to do on. it. Hold on. That's exactly what I'm getting to. Right. Please. So, you know, when you, somebody says something so stupid like that, and mm. like Trump says, oh, they let out all the mental institutions and the prisoners of countries, the opponent has a responsibility to say, mm. Which countries? Yeah. Tell me which countries released all their prisoners and mental uh, I inmates, etc. What are you talking about post-birth abortion? That doesn't even make any sense, you deranged lunatic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm not on getting on Jake Tapper or Dana Bash. The guy opposed to you is supposed to make those super obvious points. Yeah. Look, at this point, this conversation about whether Joe Biden's going to drop out is over. He's definitely going to drop out. Mm -hmm. The donors no longer think he's a good investment. And think about this, Piers. If he doesn't drop out, imagine what history is going to say about him, that he put his monstrous ego, mm -hmm. maybe, the, maybe an ego even larger than Donald Trump's, mm -hmm. above the needs of the country, the party, the voters. It's an unbearable thought. <laughs> he would become one of the great villains of American history. And there's actually a really easy way to replace him. All he has to do is say, I'm out. And then we go back to a traditional convention where yeah. the delegates decide. That's almost always how Americans and by the way, their by the way, I think candidates we discussed, anyway. Yeah, we discussed it before, but two incumbent Democrat presidents since the end of World War II have both stood down in election year, Harry Truman and uh, Lyndon Johnson. So there's a president. Do I agree with Jank that Biden will drop out? Uh, no, I think I agree with Jank that where he says the donors will try and force Biden to drop out. Because he's not just saying, like, Biden's going to drop out on his own volition. He knows that Biden is a deranged lunatic, in his words, um, that is, like, incredibly narcissistic and operating on pure resentment and fumes. Do you think there's any chance of the 25th Amendment? I said last night that I think it's the funniest thing that could happen, and then the Republicans stop it because they think Biden is, like, you know, a great, uh, a, a much better candidate to run against than anyone else. Precedent here. For, for this to happen. It yeah. just hasn't happened where the incumbent president doesn't want to go. Uh, General, I want to bring you in just on one point, which is the behaviour of Jill Biden after the debate. <laughs> Vinny, why does he look teary-eyed? Vinny's still mad that he has to sit on a panel with a Twitch streamer, as opposed to what he does, which is, I think, being, like, the third most relevant guy on the Patrick Bet David Valuetainment podcast. <laughs> you don't do anything. I, on the other hand... I'm valuetaining people. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I just said he looks red and he's got a shitty tan and he's getting progressively redder. I even said I was a fan of his. Does this mean you're not getting invited to PBD? Are you kidding me? Patrick Bet David is a entertainment demon. He is a valuetainment demon. He knows good content when he sees it. If anything, this would mean I would go on Patrick Bet David extra hard. The only thing standing in my way of going on Patrick with David is my lack of interest in ever flying to the state of Florida. I hope you guys understand that. Hey, watch this. Oh, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the <laughs> On sports. Anyway, I don't really care about what she has to say. I wrote a column for New I don't really care about what uh, Mo Vela has well, to say. He just, like, glazes Biden nonstop for, like, 20 minutes. Literally, they just he just like doesn't really the president deserve the opportunity to do that. He clearly was not on his game last right. night. And so no, just gonna, I can see people trying you know, people. A lot of people in the Democrat Party like Biden. They you know, I've read Thomas Friedman saying he cried last night. The New York Times columnist when he was watching it, you know, Frank Bruni was sort of tearing up. Everyone's tearing up. I don't really feel emotional, I'm afraid. And I find it very hard to feel sympathy for Joe Biden. I think it was very sad what we watched. But I also think there's, we're now at the stage where this is actually willfully selfish and harming to the Democrat Party, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I only have one uh, point that I have sympathy for Joe Biden on. But first of all, these guys, I mean, look at the people in power, whether it's media or Democratic leadership. They're all crying because, uh, oh, their beloved Joe Biden uh, didn't look good. Uh, I mean, this guy uh, just sent $20 billion to slaughter more Palestinian children. I, I cry for them. I don't cry for Joe Biden. This uh, Joe Biden has taken corporate donations his entire life. He used to be Tell known him, as a Jake. senator from MBNA. This guy is... Get him, Unc. 
You scrolling, lol? No, my phone wasn't even on me. You guys are wrong. I was just like looking down as I was bored and forgetting that the camera's on me. It's a classic corporate corrupt down. Dude, at this point, it's been 43 minutes and I waited for 30 minutes listening to peers get interviewed by some footballer, okay? Because he was like 30 minutes late to his own broadcast and he made us just sit there and listen. He made us sit there and listen to that interview. So yeah, I'm bored. I'm in a crammed ass space in like a van. I might have actually written some stuff on Hoscord a little bit in between. Democrat. So I, I don't. Does Piers Morgan pay you? F no. Point any of this like, oh my God, he was such a good person. And think about this. This guy, and, and even if you disagree with me and you think, oh my God, no, I love uh, establishment Democrats that sell us out to the donors. Oh, you're so radical for saying things that are obviously true. But think about this. Even for those guys, he was willing to risk all of us, the Democratic voters. You're doing this for free? Bro, are you kidding me? I did this for my own personal entertainment and for you guys, okay? There's no other rhyme or reason as to why I would do that, okay? That's literally the only reason why I go on these shows. No, it's not even the exposure. What are you kidding me? I had 130,000 live viewers last night. What do you mean exposure? No, if anything, this is like taking time from my research time in the morning before I start the stream. That's why I was a little annoyed, actually, that he spent 30 minutes getting interviewed. It's like, bro, you, you know, what do you, what do you think? You think I need to be on your show? Come on now. Like, be a little bit respectful. Having said that, yeah, no, I, I literally go on these shows for this so we can react to it. And it's like fun. And there's like TikTok clips and shit that comes out. Why don't you hit the do bag with them podcasting as a real job? Because uh, Piers interjected. I would have loved. Piers does not respect you. Yes, he does not. That is true. I, I don't think he does. I think he likes the drama that I bring and the eyeballs that I bring to a show, but he does not like me. He likes Jank. You can tell the difference between someone Piers actually likes and someone Piers actually doesn't like. He'll let his guests or sometimes himself rabidly come after people that he doesn't like. He likes Jank, so he'll like, you know, let Rabbi Shmuley do his thing, but then he'll like usually cut it out or let Jank pop off too. Whereas with me, he brings me on because... He brings me on because I bring eyeballs, I bring drama, and also I, uh, you know, he can unload into me, both himself and also his panelists. Do I like peers? I like peers. You are the Twitch kid? Well, I don't give a shit. I did, to be fair, I did call him a baboon in a suit. Like I said, he's a monkey. So, you know, it's not like, it's not necessarily like the best introduction to me, but I think he just, he, he, Brings me on so we can like rip into me or have the panelists rip into me. And then, you know, I just push back and it's win-win. If I get owned, then it's great. You know, uh, Kami owned Lamau, right? And if I don't get owned and I push back, then it's a really viral moment for him, for his, uh, uh, for his show. The Democratic Party, the entire country, just to satiate his ego. Oh, I want to be a two-term president. That's better for my legacy. So he's an egomaniac that I have no sympathy for, except one thing. Last night was elder abuse. And no. it was elder abuse by the entire Democratic leadership, the DNC, and yes, sorry, but Jill Biden. Mm. If Jill Biden wants to run for president, she should do it. But, I mean, there's no way that a loving spouse... Let's that happen. No, I agree. And thinks, oh, great. Push him out there. Push him out there. We got this. You don't have it. This is absurd. But the one piece of good news out of all. It's not cause for Mama Gretch to be put in office. All this appears is it's over. We're going to get a new candidate, and hopefully we're going to kick Donald Trump's ass. And Cenk, before and I go to Hassan. Do that, before I go to Hassan, who would, just quickly, who would your preference be to who that person should be that could actually be the nominee and potentially beat Trump? So the problem with the Democratic Party is that they never pick a populist in a populist time. Mm. They keep picking the most establishment candidates there are when the American people keep telling you they don't want establishment candidates like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. So they should pick a populist, but they won't. Of course, the top candidate is Bernie Sanders, and he would easily, easily beat Donald Trump. Everybody actually knows that. They just don't. And let's be honest, the Democratic Party would rather have Donald Trump than Bernie Sanders. So, but if you say, no, Bernie Sanders is too old or we, we can't have it, you can go to Ro Khanna, you can go to Jamie Raskin. Jamie Raskin is beloved by everyone in the Democratic Party. He's incredibly smart, incredibly principled. Picks, I mean, he would eviscerate Donald Trump in a debate. Let's pick someone who can win and actually represent the people. OK, um, before I come to Hassan, actually, let me just that get Vinny's reaction. There's a delay. Well, one name... I'm afraid I'm going to disagree with you.
There's a delay. Uh, that that head tilt for for Rokana for the record. I was like, the oh, fuck. Thank there. Yeah, go on then. Okay, Hassan, you respond. Yeah. Uh, okay. First of all, big Gretch. That's it. That's the method. That's the movement. Okay. Put Mama Gretch in office. Okay. She's popular. She's in a pivotal state. She would absolutely crush it. You got. I don't like Gavin Newsom at all. I think he has a lot of weaknesses. I think he's horrible. He's done an abysmal job uh, refusing to fix the housing crisis in California that's obviously contributing to the homelessness crisis so that, you know, uh, guys like Vinny can complain about how much of a shithole California is or whatever people talk about. Like, that would stick yep, uh, on a national level on Gavin Newsom. Don't turn, Cal don't turn the rest of the country into California would be the attitude. Uh, another good guy, I think, uh, another great guy, J.B. Pritzker, governor of Illinois. We need a big boy in office. We need, we need a dynamo. We need a guy with a kind heart. You know, he could even, I'm not, I'm not exactly a fan of uh, him being a billionaire, but ultimately, you know, maybe, maybe we could have a real billionaire against uh, Donald Trump's phony billionaire status. Who knows? Anyone would be better than, uh, than, than Joe Biden at this point, even Hillary Clinton. Well, I was Probably okay. Well, that's interesting. So, okay. Point, that's interesting. Is, so, I mean, for those who don't know, think, well, hang on. Jake does not agree with that. What is this? You really said this on Piers? Yes, I did. Because I'm ha dude, this is, I'm not taking it very seriously. I don't know if you guys can recognize that from the terms I'm using, but I'm not exactly taking this the most seriously, but. I'm just having fun with it. I'm freestyling, okay? <laughs> I said Mama Gretch. Just, is why I think hang on, hang on, her. Hassan. For those who don't know who the Gretch is, by the way, it's the Michigan Governor he Gretchen uh, Whitmer. But I want, to come to, I want to come to Vinny. Hillary Clinton's name is being talked up here as potentially oh. the unfinished business that she comes sweeping back and she does what she... What I was going to say, Hillary Clinton might do better than Joe Biden, but not by a lot and might still lose, but they cut me off before I could finish that point. But it doesn't matter who gives a shit, whatever. She failed to do in 2016, and she actually beats him. What are your thoughts about Hillary returning? I, you know what, Piers? I think she's abs she's she's finished. Hillary Clinton has no chance. I think, I think every single time she gets in front of a, a camera, it's... Wait, what? Bro, I can't get over Jenks that Dems would take Trump over Bernie. That's crazy as f No, it's not. He's 100%. Uh, he's 100% right on that. They basically did that in 2016, by the way. They 100% would because they did. Okay? Also, do you guys not remember 2020? What are you talking about? The Democratic Party and the media apparatus would absolutely, would absolutely, without a shred of doubt, pick... Uh, Donald Trump over Bernie Sanders. There were people that were openly writing think pieces on this, by the way, like when uh, when, the, when the Bernie was a prospect. Democratic uh, Party. I think she's the worst from her history with her and her husband. It's just it's it's abysmal. Let's not even get into Hill, the Clinton Foundation and Epstein and her husband. That's a whole different can of worms. But I think it's funny how everybody on the left is so, you know, uh, this whole failed presidency is because of Biden's age and his dementia, which he definitely has. Whoever's going to come in, it's the Democratic Party's policies, plain and simple. I don't give a damn who you put in there, Gretsch, Bernie Sanders, communism, you want socialism, you want all that crap. <laughs> it's not going to fix anything. That shit's going to keep going. Say what you want. I Last night, solidified even more for the independents in the middle that are kind of on the fence. I would much rather vote for the convicted felon than this poor old i love people going bernie showed us his true colors on genocide F him brother it's not gonna happen anyway but like that's such a funny take to have like yeah okay tomorrow bernie sanders is gonna be president over joe biden and you're like nah it's because he still loves genocide so no like what are you talking about we're talking about like what the realistic options are bernie is not even in there but in the hypothetical that he is what are you going to be like? No, I'm not even entertaining the hypothetical. He's not sufficiently, you know, up to snuff. We're talking about the leader of the Democratic Party. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? Like, I, that is so beyond, that is so beyond comprehension for me because it's so unimaginably unrealistic that, like, that would ever happen. But, it, but I do love entertaining the idea that there's people there. There's people out there that would be like, no, nah, I actually don't like Bernie as the leader of the Democratic Party, as opposed to who? As opposed to who? Like, what do you want? Embalmed Lenin? Embalmed Mao? Embalmed Ho Chi Minh? Like, who? Who? Who's out there? Who is a better 
Democratic Party candidate. Like, Bernie's old, and I think that's a major weakness for him. And especially when everyone's, like, personally uh, talking about how unimaginably old uh, Biden is, that would, be the, that would be a relatively weak substitution and less likely... But like, why are we, why are we even having this conversation over like something that's never going to happen because it's so goddamn beyond the pale, like it's so goddamn unimaginable. And there's chatters who are still like, nah, even in that hypothetical life, I don't f with them. <laughs> Old moron that they wheel out there now on purpose, like a sacrificial lamb with no drugs and everything to now to turn, you know, this Pierce, every other debate. Every CNN anchor, everybody that was moderating would cut Trump off. They would yell. They would stop. Mm -hmm. Notice how they sat there. Jay Tapper and Dana Bash, they were quiet. They let everything pull out. This was all on purpose. And I think that Hillary Clinton's on the table. I think Gavin uh, Newsom, for sure, he was the only one there. You notice that? Uh, he had good gel in his hair. I've he was said, I've said, listen, I've said for I've there. Why is he always so angry? You know, maybe this is not a question to ask 48 minutes into the video, but like, it is kind of weird because, like, you could ask him a question about, like, what he ate for lunch. And he would respond with this energy where he's, like, he's, like, so mad at you. Like, he's behaving like, he's behaving like Piers Morgan has insulted his mother, his dead mother, in front of this crowd, the way he's popping off. I said for two years that I think Newsom is the one that could put up a, the best fight. And I was persuaded when he went on Fox News into the heart of, a, of the enemy lair and sat there with Sean Hannity for an hour and acquitted himself very, very well. I mean, Jenna, to bring you in here, I mean, all, and, and, who, who, Jenna, if you, were, if you were a Democrat right now, who would you think? Uh, I had a little bit of a moment with her because she was, like, chirping about abortion and, like, how radical Big Gretch was. Had the best chance of actually taking Trump on. You know Trump very well. You know his weaknesses, his strengths. Mm -hmm. Who of all the Democrat names you've seen touted would you fear most potentially as being the one that could win it for the Democrats? Well, I actually agree with what Sink said, that we really need a populist uh, on both sides that actually speaks to what the American people are concerned about. And the if the Democrats can put up someone who isn't so far extreme leftist establishment, uh, then I think that they have a real chance of actually getting disaffected Republicans as well. And I think that they should put up someone like an Andrew Yang. They should have gone with RFK Jr. I mean, he he acquitted himself very well mm -hmm. in the debate, and neither side, notice, wanted him on stage. I think he is going to rise in momentum after last night's debate. And anyone, realistically, that the Democrats put up now, if it's not someone as far left as a Gretchen Whitmer, for example, has a real shot at winning. But what I think the American people need to do is take Can a hard look at the U.S. Gretchen Constitution. Whitmer's we have left? a minimum. Because well, look at what she did during the COVID can you, can lockdowns. You, can you give me like uh, look one at how policy? she has? So look at what she did during the COVID lockdowns. Okay. Look at her position on extreme on abortion. Look at how she has run her state as a, as basically taking what's her, what's legislative power on into the executive. So she she is what's, she look and look at her position what's her, what's on her queer position theory. On abortion so that you she find is so for extreme. abortion. Um, so her position. <laughs> I love that she said extreme leftist establishment, by the way. Like three things that definitely your face when she suggested Andrew Yang killed me. Yeah. I mean, she's a, a she's not exactly the brightest crayon. OK, <laughs> like she said, Andrew Yang would be great. She said she supported Ron DeSantis. Ridiculous stuff uh, overall. This is like this is the pink hair on the panel. OK, like the last time I was on Piers always has to fill the panel with like one person who just doesn't know what the f they're saying. Like at least Vinny despite being a coked out uh, TRT monster is like at least one entertaining and two has like a tangible position. She, on the other hand, is just, she has no position. She's the no position candidate. She's the center candidate on the panel. She's just there to just do this. Okay. And have a little bit of airtime so that maybe she can cut together like a, like a video and, and give that to her shitty ass middling agent who will then be able to put her on like actual TV shows like MSNBC or whatever. That's the reason why she's here. She's just trying to have like airtime. How do you plead to aiding and abetting false statements and writings and under accusation 23 SC 190514? Guilty. And is this your signature along with Mr. Hoag's signature on the accusation? It is. In the wake of the 2020 presidential election, 
I believed that challenging the results on behalf of President Trump should be pursued in a just and legal way. <laughs> anyway, um, let's continue. So she's like, oh, yeah, um, Gretchen Whitmer has radical positions on abortion. OK, radical positions on abortion on abortion that is so extreme is that she wants uh, no limits at all, no restrictions. And most of the country is not for that. Um, even the Democrats themselves know that there needs to be some restrictions, at least in. So there's like a bunch of different things I wanted to say here to be like, one, most of the country is in agreement on uh, our side of the spectrum when it comes to abortion. That's why Donald Trump is like even that's why Donald Trump is not defeating Joe Biden handily currently Two, uh, one. You are a woman. Oh, I did do the you are a woman. I asked her if she's ever been pregnant, but then they cut me off again. Also, it's a lie. Like Governor uh, Whitmer is in favor of Roe v. Wade in general. I did here. You'll see in a third second. Term. No, that is absolutely true. And I mean, feel free to fact check me on that if she's changed her position. But no restrictions on the Democrat third trimester leftists. is a falsehood. That's not a real thing. Every conversation that's, that we have no, with Republicans unfortunately state, uh, revolves my, around no, hang on, hang on. hallucinations my, my of home, Republicans. My former home state there is of no, Colorado is no third... allows abortion until the day of birth. Uh, yes. All third trimester abortions in every single state still has to have some uh, some kind of medical necessity, okay? They get so mad when you call them out on this lie. I know. They need to have some kind of medical necessity. There needs to be some kind of issue that is presented to the carrier, okay? That's it. There's no, like, recreational voluntary abortions happening in the third trimester, okay? It's also 1% of abortions. 15,000 abortions total. It's a ridiculous misnomer. It's just, like, silly thing to have a conversation around. People are not carrying pregnancies to, uh, over the course of three trimesters to have a fun abortion, like a fun abortion on their own, just for the sake of it. Pure Republican mania. That is the law in seven states right now, including there California, where Gavin Newsom no, is the governor. There is so no there state, are people there is no that can go in, yes, in the country there, where you can have a yes. third trimester abortion without a without Colorado, a doctor California, giving you a medical states. exemption no you still have to no, get look at a the psychiatric law. Look at the law. evaluation and it doesn't matter whether a, a health care evaluation that, no, but they, it's still Do allowed that's the women point. dude do you guys want to know something so insane third trimester abortions oftentimes are not even covered by insurance okay it is a three-day process for the most part you're basically inducing a birth in that situation because it's on the third trimester it is a really complicated procedure that's number one and number two beyond the the fact that the procedure itself is complicated and it's like inpatient surgery you have to be in the hospital for three days to be able to get it done uh beyond the fact that you need multiple checks and multiple medical evaluations leading up to the third trimester abortion otherwise you could possibly die during the process regardless of all of that reality it's also usually not covered by insurance it could cost up to twenty five thousand dollars in this country and besides the point, and here's the most significant part of this conversation, okay, not only is it traumatic, but also you have carried a baby for nine months at that point, or at least for two trimesters. That is insane to think that like people are going to go out and get a third trimester abortion for the funsies. And the elective aspect of it in terms of the psychiatric damage that the patient has, the carrier has, if you want to eliminate that in its entirety, then make first trimester and second trimester abortions easy to make healthcare free, make it so that people can figure out that they're pregnant early on with sex ed so that there's no one that has to think about it or try to do GoFundMe fundraisers so they can actually get the $25,000 to be able to get an abortion. And by the time that that fundraiser is over, you're in the third trimester. Oh, I hate this conversation so much. The idea, and by the way, that's the reason why I asked her, like, have you ever been pregnant? Which I, which will come in a second. Are the going point around, is that it is still allowed. Okay, you're a woman. You're a woman. You're a woman. Have you ever been pregnant? I have a yeah. question for you. Have you, have, or I don't know. Have you? Okay, that, so you know my how medical history is not relevant that is. here, but it's, it's I actually, am a, and so I mean, no, have you ever is, been it pregnant? Is, the how point are I'm you, making how is, are you, how it is a, how are you it is obviously, it is obviously irrelevant. A, the point I've never here been pregnant, but it, it, but it seems like I understand it as, best, as, as good as you do. 
What's happening no, here? No, you actually if don't no understand woman is it carrying because a pregnancy of the law for in nine months, states. so they can have a regular. Ob- whether Hassan is pregnant. I no woman is pregnant. All right, months let's. Actually about so they can so have a guys. You're talking over each other. You should not have violated her privacy, though. Shut the fuck up, bitch. What's the Buttigieg thing where he's like, people have the most likely picked out a name and boss stuff by that point? Yeah, it's just so stupid. Also, she didn't have to answer that question. The point is, the point is, third trimester, third trimester abortions are not only unimaginably rare, but they are almost, ne- they're, they're never actually like elective in the sense that like you just carried it up until that point so you can get the abortion. In some instances, the elective aspect of it, they call it elective, okay? But like the elective aspect of it is because the pregnancy was was caught far too late as a direct consequence not having access to health care. That's it. In terms of that, trying to legislate this away so you make it super complicated for the people that literally have like this procedure only out of medical necessity is insanely cruel, okay? Bro complaining about violating violated privacy when her views violate women's bodily autonomy. It's just so dumb. Also, yes, I was pregnant and I gave birth to a bear. So, and preg. It's real. This is my daughter. I gave birth to her. This too much. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Let me, what let me, Pierce asked. I just have let some breaking news. I have some breaking news for, the, for everyone. Uh, the Biden campaign spokesperson, Seth Schuster, says that Biden will not be exiting the race. There's no... Ba- and then my goat, Harry Sasson, comes in. ...basis for that. Uh, there's nothing that voters have indicated that they agree with that. Senior White House correspondent at CNN, uh, Kayla Tausch, said on X, not only does POTUS not plan to drop out, Biden remains committed, incredibly, to a second debate in September, an advisor tells me. I cannot see that happening. But we actually have now... But me, you were creepy for that question. No, you're creepy for trying to do a three-minute ad break debate literally at 4.53, okay? Okay, you take an hour off for that. At going forward, that's it. I'm... I'm dishing out bans for two parters, okay? <clears throat> we're banning bad bat we're banning bad baits from now on. It's over. It's a new dawn, it's a new day on the broadcast. If you come in here and say some fuck shit, specifically so you can get my attention, specifically so you get me to read out what you have to say, just so you can then turn around and be like, oh, top of the hour your bait. Boom, you're done. We have to I hate doing this to the chatters who are trying to do a collaborative effort, okay? I hate doing this to chatters. But I need to elevate the baits a little bit. We got to raise the bar. We got to make it a little costly. Okay? We have to make it a little costly, dude. I'm sorry. We, we got to go back to the one-parter meta. That shit was way harder. It's way harder to do a one-parter. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Okay? Straw donation ad break debates are insane. Doing short breakdown style videos on these popular Republican talking points would be great. Nine month abortion and other points would be great. Breakdown of format and detail and sourced out to the years would be great content for normies. Aren't you mansplaining a little? <laughs> no. What do you mean? <laughs> that only works if I'm being misogynistic to a woman and not when she is demonstrating her own internalized misogyny <laughs> in terms of restricting, making, a, making an argument to restrict women's bodily autonomy. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's funny. I like that. She talked over you the whole time, but the second you talked, Pierce had to jump in. Yeah, classic. Mansplaining, why mansplaining is okay? Yes. I mean, I'm a man, and I explain things, so I will be mansplaining, like, quite a bit. As a ma- So is misogyny is one I don't like? Okay, I can't tell if these guys are chirping for funsies now because I re- read, like, a bait, and it gave confidence to, like, all the dummies, or maybe they don't realize that I'm running the three-minute ad break right now. At the top of the hour, and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free. Or if this is like legitimately a person who thinks he's launching a good argument, no man, misogyny is when you're I don't know objectifying women, denying them their bodily autonomy, thinking that they're lesser than men. That's what misogyny is. Misogyny is not interrupting any woman, no matter what the f- they're saying, uh, especially when they're currently making a misogynistic argument. Get your eye booger here. You can eat it. We have Radlibs defending forced birth advocates. Yeah, Radlibs are probably some of the dumbest that the left has to offer. The left has to offer in the sense that, like, they're so easily manipulated. You could, like, literally jiggle some keys in front of them and they'd be like, <laughs> like, they just, they just hear, like, woke terminology and they look at things as, like, woman good, man bad. 
they are the cartoonish depiction of like what the right says the left is like somebody joining us who is as low-key infantilizing her i am infantilizing her she's an idiot what are you talking about yes dude i'm infantilizing a person not because not on the basis that they're a woman but on the on the basis that they're like making a incredibly dumb argument about how women's bodily autonomy not being restricted which was gretchen whitmer who's also a woman by the way her perspective on the matter is radical claiming that gretchen whitmer's position on abortion is radical is unimaginably stupid misogyny is when you disagree with a woman i know is pro biden and thinks that he won last night it's the tiktoker yeah. harry sisson uh harry um you think biden won last night one person <laughs> yeah no i did definitely uh, on the substance of i got so excited when harry popped in my goat how dare you infantilize the person with a toddler's view of how the world works yeah i know you're right as a feminist okay i should have turned around and been like my queen you are so right we should kill women that get abortions <laughs> So the conversation biden won his policy was pragmatic it was logical and donald trump uh just this is a this is like one of the only remaining pro biden tiktokers i think he might literally be the only one at this point he's like uh he's like a super riding for biden tiktoker him and the other kid with the zoomer haircut he's the last man standing just lied the entire time is incapable of telling the truth is incapable of actually laying out policy he didn't talk about how he's going to make the american people's lives better he just you know said that you know january 6th didn't happen he talked about the election he said that overturning roe was a great thing and forcing 10 year old girls to give birth is a fantastic thing that was donald trump's debate uh so on the substance of the conversation joe biden absolutely prevailed right but the problem you've got is i saw the cnn fact checkers on joe biden's public statements last night and it was just untruth after untruth after untruth Oh, I I'm not sitting here that Joe. I'm not sitting here telling you that Joe Biden tells the truth every single time he speaks, or that he gets every single number right and every single uh, statistic right. He gets most of them but wrong. To compare, that's not true. To compare Joe Biden's lies yeah, to Donald Trump's lies him. is laughable. Trump told over thirty thousand lies during his presidency, averaging around twenty a day, and he showed that last night when he lied about every single. Th I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit proud of him. I was. I was a little bit proud of him for for cooking here. He he did a good job. Thing he talked about. Lying doesn't win debates. Yeah, but the problem is, if you're going to use lying or misleading the public with statements against uh, a candidate, you've got to make sure your own candidate speaks with unforked tongue. I mean, Biden, barely a week goes by without him saying something which is immediately proven to be untrue. I mean, only like two weeks ago, he was claiming that his uncle was shot down and eaten by cannibals. It, none of that ever happened. It wasn't shot down and he wasn't eaten by cannibals. I mean, I just think that this idea that Trump's the only one who... Whose, uh, whose statements can't be trusted, is just not true. Last night, again and again, I listen, I'm not denying that Trump made a series of, of untrue statements. He does that. He barrels through and hopes that the big messages about the border and so on kick home, and they probably do, actually, with many Americans. But if Biden's going to play the lying card as a pro-Biden thing against Trump, he's got to tell the truth and get his numbers right. He can't then have a fact check from CNN, which was painful to watch last night. It went on and on and on. Almost every statistic he came out with was completely wrong. Yeah, but Pierce, I mean, let's be real here. Like, if you're lying... Oh, Vinny's not going to let him slide either. Vinny's coming back. I love how the Dems are ignoring the opposite of the debate when one of the most important debates ever brought up in any political science or history class is JFK v... Nixon debate where JFK won just because he looked better on TV. Yeah. And it was also like, I guess at that point, it was like not all that common to have televised debates at all. So like it was one of those moments where like Nixon was sweating and people could see it. JFK wore makeup and people could see that. And he looked infinitely better in comparison. I think it might've been the first one. Is it, was it the first one? It was the first. Okay. I didn't want to get it wrong. Um, to be even more specific, it was the first ever televised debate. Uh, debate, and JFK won with TV watchers, but Nixon won with radio listeners. Yeah. You see you the get, one where he said One the, sec, Vinny. You look like a. You know, relax, buddy. Uh, if you're getting Harry, a number Harry, Harry, incorrect, Harry, right? When, when, if you're getting a number Trump, incorrect, hey, that's like a so very seven small years ago. Do we know anything? Is anything real? Does anything matter, dude? Dude, I don't think you understand. This is completely normal. Okay. Yes, Biden is a carcass. Yes. A lot of Americans recognize that again. But you have to remember, Donald Trump spent 90 minutes talking about immigrant rape. 
Okay. Hello. Like it's gonna, it, this is what I was trying to stress in the beginning of this conversation. This is what I was trying to stress throughout the conversations that I've had on this issue. It's not like Donald Trump was sweet either. The problem is that Biden was so bad that people didn't even have time to consider Donald Trump's flubs. But of course, of course, the, the people that like watched it were, were shocked by how unimaginably insane Biden was. I mean, not Biden, sorry, Trump was. Bro, he literally, dude, 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 come on, come on. Like, I'm used to it at this point, and perhaps you are too, like, because you hear Donald Trump so much. But you have to remember, like, if someone hasn't been, like, paying that close attention, and many voters are not, and many non-voters are paying even less attention, when they see Donald Trump, let's say for the first time, since, like, the last election cycle, and he's just on there, and he's just like, I want to kill every brown person in the country. They're going to be like, what the f***? <laughs> like, yeah, no, there's going to be people that hear that and go, yeah, the other guy is like really old. Holy shit. But like all they hear, all those audiences are hearing is Donald Trump saying we have to kill immigrants immediately. Like tomorrow, we have to kill immigrants yesterday. Literally using Palestinian as a pejorative? Yeah, no, I don't think anybody cares about that. Uh, that that's like not even in consideration for many voters. Uh, hold on now, Trump I'm not done in? yet. I'm How not done yet. So especially considering both both of the candidates are like, you know, dick riding Israel. Years old? Right there. Were you 10 years old, Harry? What was that? How old were you when Trump won? 10 years old? Seven Benny, years you ago, look, you were 10 you years like old, bro. You don't know Relax. what the hell you're talking take, about. Take a breather. That's not real. right to talk about. about. You, you have rank up. He's entitled his, to his, his son, okay. Listen, listen, yeah. I know Hassan's a big yeah. fan of mine. He was right to call old. you out for looking like you're about to explode. It's okay. No problem here. Yeah, uh, you were 10 no, years look, old when Trump won. You have to level. Get him, Harry. And, and you and what are you like 80 like relax buddy take a breather you're okay, I promise. okay. Oh, cooked his ass dude so what are you like 80 relax buddy he's so mad oh man that made me so happy you're so good then so then good. yoga Biden's yoga's a, good it was good was can shit. i just say it I, doesn't i, I don't actually shit. care how old either of you are let's get back to the real reality which is yeah, I'm, I'm, i care about yeah, the yeah, age yeah, yeah. of the president because he looks like he's 180. so listen, uh, harry listen, i'm just being used yeah. there's 30, 33 percent of people watching it apparently think biden won i don't know harry hang on hang on harry i don't know he's getting so mad Oh, I did have fun. This was like, this was probably my most fun Piers Morgan uh, panel. Jenk is sitting there like I came here for the real discussion. I mean, that's Piers Morgan. I'm sorry. Like, no disrespect to Unk, but <laughs> what the f*** are you expecting? Of course, it's going to be valuetainment through and through, especially when, especially when you got this guy on the panel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How anybody, honestly, can watch that debate and honestly conclude that Biden won. You'd have to be so deeply embedded in the Democrat partisan tank that you can't crawl out long enough to see the wood for the trees. So first thing, I want to respond to your uh, lie comment. I, I, I think that, yeah, we want both candidates to be honest, but we have to weigh the, the lies here. Like if Joe Biden gets a statistic incorrect, that is vastly different than Donald Trump still pushing lies about January 6th and about the election. So that's- He's such a, he is such a good Democratic Party op, by the way. Like he is, he is so much better than like 90% of these dummies in terms of like keeping his cool and just sticking to the facts. Like he's actually a very good communicator. I mean, obviously push comes to shove. I mean, this guy, he's the, you know, relentless, relentless Brandon Dick Rider, right? Obviously. So it's not like we are in line ideologically, but uh, having said that, I think, especially for his age, like he's, he's pretty talented first and foremost. But second of all, as I said, the substance of the conversation is what matters. Trump can scream the loudest. He can lie the most. That doesn't mean you win a debate. When Joe Biden's up there saying like, you know what? My policy is pragmatic. I want to give women their reproductive rights. I want to continue to lower health care costs. I want to expand health care for veterans more and more. That's pragmatic policy. That's logical. But Harry, the problem is that With a little push, you can turn him socialist. No, no. This dude, I'm going to be honest. I don't have any evidence for this, but this is one hundo P, a former Hasanabi head turned DNC operative, okay? Like, all of those Gen Z for Change guys, uh, including uh, Sean the Black, who's wonderful, is is no 0% shot he was awesome on my head. No, I, I'm, t dude, come on, 2020? This guy was in here 100%.
I think he's still, he might even still follow me on TikTok. I'm pretty sure he used to. Okay, but Harry, here's the problem. Substance. Harry, here's the problem. He couldn't articulate his views in a way that anyone could really understand. No, he's not a Hutch viewer. He has his, he, he has his own motivations. You're ridiculous. He's so much better than Hutch at being a propagandist for the Democratic Party. What are you talking about? He's not like recycling destiny takes like Hutch is. The f no, this guy's getting, this guy's getting his, he, he's, he's straight piping from the DNC. Okay. He's getting his, <laughs> he said Hutch. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> sure. To be fair, could have gone the dark route and be a grifter of the caliber of Jackson Hinkle? Yes. You all, I think a lot of you forget this community has spawned some of the actual literal spawns of Satan, like Jackson Hinkle, like uh, the other one, the, the short, the, the short Albanian one. I, the f was his name? The one who's like, I can be so much more racist than you. Haas. Yeah, that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that clip. <laughs> Sneeko, technically. <laughs> I, I like that that's how you know him. Yes, I don't have the brain rot. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I know him as the short Albanian man who once famously said, I could be so much more racist than you. <laughs> and, and secondly, and more crucially, in Trump, he has an opponent who tells a lot of untruths. And what you want the president of the United States to do is to be quick-witted enough and sharp enough and intelligent enough to every time he does that, leap on it and tell the American people why what he said was untrue. Biden was simply incapable of doing any of that. And that's what a lot of Democrats have said overnight is the most problematic thing. It's not that he's old or anything. It's that he was incapable of either articulating policy in a way that resonated uh, or holding Trump to account. And if you can't do that with, with a candidate like Trump, there's no hope. Yeah, except here's that it's was the, that. Uh, the the method uh, that Biden was. Hang on a second, I'll come to you in one ahead, sec. Just let, let Harry respond to that. Sorry. Well, uh, all right. What, what I was gonna say is, go if ahead, that's Harry, the sorry. method that Biden was gonna go with, then all of his <laughs> all of his answers would just be fact checking Trump. He, every two minute he asks, he's be like, okay. my delay is so annoying too. That's the other thing. Harry's very good. He's familiar with your work. Says Hassan's DNC contact. Solid investment from our team. He doesn't follow you anymore. We won't let you. He doesn't. He doesn't follow you anymore. <laughs> I think he is a former Hassan Abed. I don't know if he would admit it or not. Maybe he isn't, but I'd be shocked. But regardless, I think he's, I, I, I respect his game. I respect his talents. You can't zoom in, uh, zoom calling like Harry. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. How come Harry gets a zoom in call, but I get, I had to sit in a goddamn studio. What? Interview him. Speak with him. Debate the poor child. Revolution, folks. Reach out and... Reach out to him and ask. Work on your connections. Connect with him. Bro, are you okay? Calm down, man. That is a normal chatter. He is. This is the most normal chatter. Okay, Trump lied about this, this, this. And that's not uh, any way to win a voter over. Biden, it's, I, I would think it's more of the moderator's job. to. Tim Pool's hairline. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. What? Read my chats. What? Read this message. What? I'm... Mother... Ban his ass. Where the fuck? Megaphonics. It's been a while. It's been a while since you've been banned. Take a day off. Okay, take a day off, Megaphonics. Fact check as opposed to Biden dedicating his entire debate to fact checking. Biden should be laying out the policy, which he did. Uh, he seemed pretty coherent when he called out Donald Trump for assaulting and raping E. Jean Carroll. And what for being did a you think? Okay, well, that, like that, that excruciating that. moment when Joe Biden basically. The left is real divided, so we could be good to Sepak and debate with him. What? Dude, shut up. Please stop talking. <laughs> the left is real divided. He's not. He's a liberal. He's a Democratic Party uh, spokesperson at this point. What the f are we talking about? The left. He froze and mumbled his words. He said complete gibberish. And then Donald Trump just said, I don't think even he knows what he just said. Do you, let's just watch this clip. And I'm going to ask you to explain to me what he said. I think more importantly, he's super shameless. He's super shameless. Like, that's huge. You know what I mean? It's like kind of wild how shameless he is to just like go not not be devoid of any shame whatsoever to just like go on any broadcast and be like no i think biden did an incredible banger job and with everything we have to do with uh look if he doesn't care he doesn't like the military at all and he doesn't care about our veterans nobody been worse i had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the va I mean, Harry, what was Biden saying there? 
Uh, I, it, it's a very nice, uh, selectively edited clip. I like it. Uh, yeah, I don't think that every person ever is going to speak perfectly. So uh, highlighting Biden not speaking perfectly. No, but I watched the whole thing, not, Harry. I watched the whole thing. Broader conversation. I watched the whole 90 minutes. I don't come at this as on the left or right. I'm not a member of either party. I don't promote either party over the other. I simply come at it as a journalist. I didn't understand 90% of what Biden was saying. I did understand Trump. And I understood that he was misleading me a lot of the time, but also understood on the big picture messaging, which he kept ramming down the viewers' throats about the chaos at the border, the state of the economy, particularly on uh, black Americans and Latino Americans who are gravitating to Trump, uh, and so on and so on. On those big picture messages, he was hitting home hard. I don't know what Biden's messages were. I don't know what he was, what he was talking about. I love when Pierce claims he's 100% neutral. Like, come on, dude. Pierce, did you not understand President Biden when he talked about how the PAC Act now has a million people signing up for it? And no, now not getting really, no. Not understand I didn't, no. Did you not understand him when he talked no, about the spoke large investment kind of fighting weird, climate change croaky, in world history? No, because he spoke in a I, weird... I, I, look, I, I, I'd understood it. If you had basically translated him in real time, I'd have understood it. If Gavin Newsom had done the translation for us and articulated what Biden was trying to say... I'd have understood it. But Biden spoke for 90 minutes in a croaky, monotone, drone-like manner that honestly, to, for most average viewers watching, was utterly incomprehensible. And the problem he's got is that Trump sounded and looked exactly like he did in 2020 and 2016, like he's always done. Oh, come on. Yeah, he did. He did not. He, he did not sound exactly like he did in 2020. I promise you. Go back and watch Trump he, he in was 2016. Go back and watch Trump in 2016. Correct. Compared to. Yeah, no, Trump Trump definitely sounds pretty close to how he did in 2016. Um, that's not correct. Anyway, the rest of it is just like mumbo jumbo. They bring on like some Republican person. I don't even know who the f this lady is. And I tried to address her as well. I was muted. And then Jenk fires off. If we keep Biden in the race, the Trump victory is guaranteed. Anyway, Trump sounded more stable than 2020 or 2016. Thanks to the mic being muted. Did he not pivot to you after this? I don't think so. I mean, I guess he did. This is the example of Twitter, right? The oh, president. Been here, so, this. And it's not him. It's they, these, when he finally Let's hear Vinny. Vinny's, Vinny's, Vinny's content. Vinny's content. Let's hear Vinny. It was always obvious how old he was. It was always obvious that he couldn't do this. And I want to thank who, whichever Democrat made the decision to put this before the convention. Because thank God the debate was before the convention so we could pick someone else. If you say at this point that we shouldn't pick a different candidate, you're saying, I'm super happy to have Donald Trump as president and have him destroy this democracy. It's a betrayal of the Democratic Party. But right now, the RNC should be panicking, not celebrating, because they're going to get a new candidate, and that new candidate is going to kick Trump's ass. That de debate turned out to be a disaster for both of the candidates. OK, uh, Vinny, I can see you not entirely agreeing with that assessment. I, 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 well, because, because I'm, just, I'm just so curious. Like, what threat to democracy? Why didn't he do and burn the country down when he was the president? What, what, why? Why didn't he? All that Putin stuff, all that BS, it's all these Democrats, you guys all have Stockholm Syndrome, OK? You guys have all fallen in love. Does he sound like XQC? Why are you guys... Oh, because he's stuttering and shit? With your abuser, and the abuser is the Democratic Party. They don't give a shit about you. They don't care. They don't care. Wheel out whoever you want. It's going to be the same polities. Everything, everything that's happening right now is going to keep happening. What's going to change? You had Harry come on here. The kid, what, what was he, 10 years old? Eight years old? He's talking about like he's lived a life, and he knows what's talking about. And, and for us, for nobody to talk up, what's so good about Joe What has Joe Biden done? Can anybody give me one thing? And don't say infrastructure. It's absolute shit show, and it's not him running the show, as I we saw it. yesterday. All right, it's, Hassan, it's, hold on. It's the them. It's it? the them. It's the them when... Look at how they mute me when other people are talking. It's kind of f***ed up, don't you think? They won't let me chime in. What? I think Hassan wants to give you one thing, Hassan. It's not even just one thing. Here's the problem, okay? I don't even li I don't like Joe Biden. He went from Jim Crow Joe to Genocide Joe, and uh, he is a, a monstrous person for the most part, as are many American presidents. Having said that, however, one of the key factors here is that the administration is competent. I use the example of Twitter, right? Twitter used to be run by uh, liberal Jack Dorsey, right? That's his name, I think. Yeah. I can't really remember. And it wasn't yeah. exactly the greatest website. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the best website. It still had a litany of issues, right? 
still breaking people's brains, but at least it functioned. And then Elon Musk took over and we saw exactly what happened to Twitter. It is now a, a right wing shithole filled to the brim with gore porn and just the worst imaginable positions that you've ever heard and just open white supremacist Nazis getting hundreds of thousands of likes. And that's basically the difference between at least like a democratic administration, which does fill the agencies. You have the NLRB doing phenomenal work. You have uh, Lena Khan uh, uh, doing phenomenal work at FTC. You have the EPA, at least relatively competent. These are all issues that are going to become massive complications down the line when you have something like Project 2025 openly talking about abolishing the the uh department of education abolishing the epa like and that's precisely why people like jenk and myself who are not exactly big fans of joe biden and haven't you know haven't shied away from criticism see the writing on the wall see exactly how damaging someone like donald trump's uh, second term is going to look like and and see how damaging republican policies have become and how reactionary the republican party has become even more reactionary than before yeah uh, i mean look i would also imagine. say that, that and, your life, and what that you says you think you've hit on why we hang on hang on don't talk, don't talk at once i'll come to you uh, i sound like you've hit on something though which is it was not only biden's inability to hold trump to account for the lies he you're an idiot I hope you died the worst way. So I'm a Nazi because I had democracy in my country, huh? Kisses from Argentina where X Twitter saved my country from socialism and communism, asshole. Okay, I don't normally say this, but that guy might literally be like the 1938, like NSDAP style Nazi, like the, a child of a Nazi. You know what I mean? Like Malay, being a Malay supporter is a struggle in and of itself. But I'm not even joking when I say this. Like, this might, this dude might literally be like, you know, a classic style Argentinian by the name of like Adolfo Heimlich. You know what I mean? One of those, one of them classic Argentinians. <laughs> what do you mean? Why you call me a Nazi just because my grandfather's name is uh, Adolfo Heimlich? <laughs> All right, I can get it, man. Although it's a hard word to live, to be live from that point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Just a blondest Argentinian, okay? <laughs> uh, hey, commies crashes the economy while banging his sister and talking to his dogs. Uh, dead dog. Specifically, the dead one. Excuse me. My name is Adolfo Heimlich the <laughs> Fourth. Adolfo Heimlich was my great-grandfather. <laughs> who suspiciously did not have this accent, but instead sounded very German for some reason. <laughs> Why you call everyone Nazi? Like my neighbor's grandfather, Julio Goebbels. <laughs> what does FF mean? Final Fantasy? He's forfeiting? He's a classic libertondo, tonto. He's forced forfeiting. He's quitting the game I won. Oh, okay. Also, you guys can't, you can't tell me I'm mean when he started off the conversation with, you are an idiot. I hope you die the worst way. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not like, I, I, I would say I'm being light. With the energy he brought, Adolfo Heimlich was real. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And now he lives in Argentina. What do you mean? <laughs> this is no problem. <laughs> Just like 1000% inflation. <laughs> no problem. We love the IMF. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Okay, let's continue. He was telling. But also his inability to sell himself and what he's achieved. Because there are achievements there. Absolutely. But actually, he's been incap incapable. Gavin Newsom, in that one-minute clip I showed earlier, was able to articulate better achievements by Biden than Biden's been able to do. That's why Biden's approval rating is in the tank at like 37%. Jenna, I want to bring you in here for a kind of uh, summary of where we are with this. What do you think happens now? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think what's remarkable that we've seen in just the last 12 hours since the debate is that the Democrats are. I think that's it. That's the end of it. Like the rest of it is just a her chirping and then we end it. Um, you missed it. I think he said, I think you are far left. I am. Why did I not put Gavin up there? Like, I don't understand. He would win straight up. I did this for the, I did this with the value tainment. I didn't even know the value tainment guy was going to be there. I just knew that Jank was going to be there. And I was like, uncle nephew time. You know what I mean? It felt like I was back on the Young Turks for a moment. Holy fuck. This already has a million like views. Better. Jesus Christ. When a 10 year old uh, is the one is the only thinking is only thinking you want is time to step down. Do we really want to California the whole country? See, they're already saying it. People talking mad shit about you in the comments. Not really. This is this is my favorite type of chatter. Who's just like, they're not. <laughs> they're not at all. But like, you know, I'm just going to say it anyway. Dude, I can smell Jake's nephew through the screen and my nose ran around the other side of my face. Yeah. They are if you sort by newest. Yeah, I wonder who's in the chat. Uh who is they are if I sort by newest. Who's the toddler at the end? Oh, they're talking about Harry. The dude in the red is so high off Coke, Lamal. Piers Morgan losing all credibility, having morons like Hassan on. Hard skip. Yang gang, baby, bring him back.